Hello, I'm Jim Bostic. I'm the president of the board of directors of the Salem Arts Association. I'd like to start off by thanking SATV for being here today and helping us document this beautiful new gallery. Uh, we're going to be looking today across our member showcase, which we were fortunate enough to be able to open in June, featuring more than 150 pieces of artwork by more than 60 artists. Uh, it's really quite a collection. Uh, I'm very proud of this exhibit. This is our first exhibit in our new Salem Arts Association galleries at 159 Derby Street. The beautiful thing about moving here uh, is that we have a lot more access to the public to come in and visit. We're in this beautiful historic neighborhood right next to the National Park, down the street from the House of Seven Gables. We couldn't have better neighbors and a community to celebrate our work in. We hope everybody can come down and see the shows in person. We moved here in January, and after about 14 years of running Salem Arts, starting off down on Artist Row, spent some time on Essex Street in the old Bernard's Jewelry Store, spent uh, three years in the space at the Bridge of 211 near the train station, and it's really been a story of growth for Salem Arts Association. Each time we grow out of a space, we start looking for new opportunities. And it was serendipitous that I ran into Paul Nathan, who owns this building, and has been running his, had run his law firm out of this space since the 80s. He's an advocate of the arts, an artist himself, a very generous human being, and uh, we thank him for the opportunity to celebrate our local artists here in this beautiful building. As we walk through the galleries today, I'm going to introduce the galleries. Uh, we're going to start today here. We are in the Derby Wharf Gallery. Uh, we've named all of our galleries around the local wharves. And as we go through the galleries, I'll introduce each one. It's, uh, it, we were inspired by our, our surroundings here. And I think that that was a nice way to celebrate the community and the neighborhood that we're in. This is the, one of the largest exhibits Salem Arts has ever put on. And we have an ample amount of gallery space here, almost 2,000 square feet. We have 10 galleries. So it was a challenge to present so much work in such a large space. But for this exhibit, which the theme is really to celebrate a wide depth and breadth of the talent that we have among our artist members uh, in this space. So we curated the space in a way that we could complement the works around them. They're not in any particular order. The rooms aren't in any particular theme. It's really just a massive showcase of local talent. I want to talk with all by myself I want to walk with but I have a option I'm just saving all my love for you I know for certain what I love I knew we flirted and it's just you I'm thinking of
standing here now in our Central Wharf Gallery. Uh, we, as I can look out the window and see Central Wharf. We're in the building here, it has uh, 11 galleries in it. Uh, one very small one that we use as a media space. And the building itself has a lot of history. Uh, the building, as we can tell, was built in the early 1700s. The earliest map that I found that contains this entire structure is from 1750. In 1783, it was housed a paper stamper business, a gentleman named William May. The interesting thing about this building is that it has been added on to three times. The original part of the building that we're in now is the oldest part of the building. There's an extension on the rear and an extension on the side, giving us all of our galleries. Six fireplaces in this building, beams and open beam ceilings. Uh, it's really got a great amount of character and history built into it. Everything from traditional oils and watercolors through to modern work, glass etching, hand-blown glass, photography, sculpture, ceramics, and treated in very modern and very traditional ways. There's really something in here for everyone. And everyone that comes in here finds a favorite piece. So here we are in the, the Hawks Gallery. Uh, this, this room celebrates uh, a, the classic Salem Harbor story. Benjamin Hawks operated a very successful shipbuilding yard uh, right outside the, the window over here. It's what you know now as the Derby Wharf Beach. And he operated there. He also lived in the Hawks House, the beautiful yellow mansion that's right next to the Customs House. So we celebrate him with this gallery. So with 11 galleries, it can be challenging sometimes to look at how we're going to present, especially this volume of our work. Mm. We wanted to try to give everybody an opportunity to have their work on the wall. There's over 150 pieces in this, in this building, in, just in this exhibit. So work comes in. It's an open call for art to our members to bring in anything they want for this particular exhibit. It's a showcase of their talent. Now, when we bring that work in here, we see a wide variety of materials, mediums, uh, subject matter. And our curators, Heather Stewart in particular, and I, and a couple of other members of our team, Daniel Breslin included, will curate the show. We move things around a lot. We look for the color stories in the work. We look for common themes that we can group together. We look for styles that may complement each other when they're hanging next to each other in the wall, or even create dichotomies when you hang some things together that you wouldn't normally think go together, but when you see them in that way, you start to see connections in their shapes, their colors, their styles, and their stories.
So I'm welcoming you now to our Tucker's Wharf Gallery. Uh, many people have never heard of Tucker's Wharf, and that's because it hasn't existed since the 1800s. Uh, we know Kosciuszko Street, which is right outside of our window here. Kosciuszko Street was one of Salem's over 100 wharves. And we pulled that out of some of the history that we were looking into as we were researching the building and decided that the history of our neighboring street being Tucker's Wharf made sense to celebrate it with a gallery name. Well, when we were curating the exhibit, we had quite a bit of fantastic photography and it was a good idea for us, I think, to celebrate one room around photography. Uh, we have a lot of work in here by many, many local photographers. We received Frank Nagorka's uh, beautiful, <laughs> quirky Barbie dolls. Uh, he's been working on these collections for many years. And when I think about the nature of photography, uh, its association with media and pop culture and media culture, and then we look at the Barbie dolls and their place in our culture, it made sense to us to include them in amongst the photographs, uh, coming right down even to Frank's uh, cell phone Barbies, where they're clearly very distracted looking at their phones. Uh, I think that when we think about storytelling, which is a big part of photography, and every child who ever had a Barbie doll, all you did was make up stories. And so those storytelling connections really come together in this room, especially when you get down to Frank's Pandora Barbie, where he brings in a playful take on mythology. Uh, we have Pandora's box is filled with creatures and uh, other children's toys that come together with Barbie to really transform this myth into a, a very interesting way of, of bringing that story to life. The man I love, and he'll be big and strong. The man I love, and when he comes my way, I'll do my best to make him stay. smile, I'll understand, and in a little while, he'll take my hand, and though it seems absurd, I know we both won't say.
So we're back in Derby Wharf Gallery, and one of the things I would like to talk about in here is one of my favorite aspects of Salem Arts Association as a community of artists. Salem Arts welcomes artists of all walks of life. Uh, we have many artists who are exhibiting internationally. We have many artists who are hobbyists. We have artists that are 17 years old and uh, up to, you know, throughout the entire range of life. One artist in particular I'd like to call out here is Edel Schrott Haller. She's 92 years old. She lives behind us here over at the Brook House. Uh, we met her a couple of years ago at, at our previous location. Her work is amazing. She immigrated to America from uh, Berlin, I believe. And her work is just stunning. Uh, and I think it's a testament to how we mix together emerging artists, and professional artists, well-known artists, artists of all age. We put them together with really no judgment about their point in their artistic process or career. Everyone gets to learn something by just mixing it all together, pulling it all into one space. It's, it's a real joy for everybody to feel included. Our youngest artist is 17 years old. Uh, she has been exhibiting with us since she was probably 15, uh, has become very involved as well as her family. Uh, her name is Erin Savillis, uh, and I think our uh, most senior artist is Abel Trout Haller, uh, and in all ranges in between. I'm standing here in Hatch's Wharf Gallery. Hatch's Wharf, you might not even notice it, it is the shortest and smallest wharf on our neighboring uh, maritime historic site. We, this is our smallest gallery in the building as well, so it seemed fitting to name it after Hatch's Wharf. We refer to this as our media gallery. Uh, we keep a presentation here of programs. We have a couple of pieces in here that are multimedia pieces. One of the things, again, about Salem Arts that I think is very unique is that Salem Arts Association is arts with an S for a reason. It's not just painting and sculpture, it's performance, it's dance, it's poetry, it's writing, it's spoken word, and we get a lot of musicians that are involved. Uh, we love being able to share all of the arts as part of the experience with Salem Arts Association. So we're in the Paul Nathan Gallery and Museum. When we met Paul uh, about a year ago, uh, we struck up a conversation about Salem's need for a destination for the arts and we were able to join forces to bring Salem Arts Association into this beautiful building that Paul owns. Paul's been running his law firm or had run his law firm in this space since the 80s when he purchased the building. It's got a long history for him and as an artist himself uh, wanted to make a place to feature his artwork. The challenges of doing that as a single artist can be immense. With a group of artists like Salem Arts, we come together and everybody wins. So, thank you, Paul. Awesome. Uh, 
Paul's work is surrounding me right now. He's got a great process. It's very unique. I personally have never really seen anything like it. So Paul starts off by painting, acrylic painting, uh, textures, people, uh, the elements that are in his work. And then he photographs those, those painted elements, prints them out, scales them to different sizes, reproduces them over and over again, and brings them back together in collage. You can see in here, one of the things I love about looking at Paul's work as well is that he appears in most of his own work. If you look hard enough, you'll find Paul in here somewhere. I think that if, you know, as you look through the Paul Nathan Gallery, you'll see uh, his love for history in the community as well. Many of these pieces uh, feature Salem landmarks. You'll see the Custom House. You'll see the Ropes Mansion. You'll see this building show up over and over again. Uh, you'll see ships. You'll see uh, landmarks from all over the North Shore. And he incorporates them in very interesting ways. So if you look closely, you'll see them appear again and again. You'll see scenes from Marblehead. You'll see scenes from uh, all other cities around the area, which makes the work very quirky and interesting. I'm what they call the shop chairperson, basically the manager of the shop here at Salem Arts. And the thing that I like about that is um, the diversity of the items that we have mm -hmm. here that is artist made. Um, a lot of um, things that you can actually wear like jewelry, clothing, beautiful silk scarves, we even have pottery, um, household goods like silverware that are hand decorated by certain artists. So there's something for everyone and also um, one of the highlights is getting a chance to work alongside the artists that make everything here that we put on display because part of belonging to the association is the artists actually come and volunteer in the shop and do other volunteering as well but um, a lot of times they're in the shop helping with the retail part um, and so you, people who come in actually sometimes might get to meet some of the artists that make the stuff they're buying sure. which is very cool and um, I think also one of the things that I thought was unusual in comparison to a lot of art association shops, besides the fact that we have like ties and wearable things like clothing um, and jewelry, um, is that the price range is like from a dollar to like a thousands, mm -hmm. you know. So um, there is something that any, everyone can afford. And but also like other art associations. There is, of course, photography, filmed, photo um, framed photography and portraits available as well. But that's what I really like about it. It's a lot of um, options and diversity. Um, another additional thing that I think is very cool to have is we have original greeting cards that are made by a lot of our photographer artists and painter artists. So like even behind me, I have um, a carousel full of greeting cards and I just think it's a very nice um, thing to have as, as opposed to going to like, you know, um, a drugstore and getting the cookie cutter greeting cards. They're so boring and these are like pictures that um, someone locally took and put on a greeting card. Uh, Paul Nathan also um, has some of his own um, greeting cards that also have forever stamps already on them <laughs> with his name as a matter of fact and um, they have his artwork photographed on them so if you can't take home a giant piece of his artwork that cost pretty extensive amount of money you can get a beautiful piece of his artwork on a greeting card and um, that's what a lot of people have been doing when they enjoy his artwork in the gallery so those are some of my favorite things. Uh, lastly I was wanting to point out that of course, happening with this, um, the year that we've called the year of COVID, um, online shopping is the way to go, and that's all everyone is doing. Um, and so um, we decided that while we were closed, it would be a very good thing to get our own online shopping experience going with the Salem Arts. So we do have a huge amount of um, our items online, and um, our shopping cart is ready to go. We were doing curbside pickup and now we're getting ready to launch our shipping and handling so that anybody from anywhere can actually check out what we have for sale and we want to ex expand our uh, horizons as far as allowing everyone else to see all these things that they can buy. 
So this gallery isn't one of the wharves. We've named this gallery Friendship after the beautiful ship that's in Salem Harbor here. Uh, the artwork in this gallery is special to us. Uh, we have featured in here the works of Ellen Hardy and Paula Bellew. Uh, Paula was a school teacher at Salem High School and or Salem School District. We started a scholarship in her name in 2014 after she passed away. We've also started a scholarship in the name of Ellen Hardy, who passed away in 2017. Ellen was a founding member of Salem Arts Association and very much involved with the growth that brought us here today. So we celebrate both of them with a scholarship fund that we give to Salem High School graduating seniors, actually students from any Salem school who are going on to art school. Along with their artwork, we have works that have been donated by members of Salem Arts Association, and 100% of the proceeds from any sales of the artwork in this room go to fund our scholarships. So we're here today now in the Ellen Hardy Gallery. This is our welcoming gallery at Salem Arts. It's the first room that most visitors come in and enjoy. Uh, in this room, it's an extension of our shop. We have a great collection, again, of uh, more moderately priced paintings, photography, ceramics, jewelry, all kinds of things. Uh, we hope you enjoyed your visit today to Salem Arts. Uh, thank you, SATV, for uh, creating this program. Uh, featuring all of our local artists. Uh, our artists are a lifeblood of our community. Uh, without a place for them to have their artwork celebrated, uh, it's so important that, that we exist in a way to give our artists a community, a place to meet other artists, a place to hang out. And that's really why Salem Arts Association is here, uh, to serve our community and to serve our artists. We'd love for you to come visit the gallery in person we're open on Saturdays and Sundays at 159 Derby Street. We are also available on our website, our virtual tours of the entire gallery, uh, all of the exhibits upstairs. Our upcoming exhibits will begin in September. We're going to be featuring our 14th annual Inspired by PEM exhibit, which invites local artists, whether they're members of Salem Arts or not, to bring in work that is inspired, you know, shows how you've been inspired by the Peabody Essex Museum. Along with that taken, we're also going to be featuring a second exhibit called Artoberfest. All things Halloween, autumn, witchcraft, uh, the things that help uh, bring more interest to Salem, and we'd like to celebrate that here too. We hope you'll visit us often. Be sure to check out our online shop, check out our virtual galleries, but most of all, come into the gallery here and say hi. I'd also like to mention that Salem Arts is an entirely volunteer organization. We are only open because of our artists who come in and volunteer their time to be here. Uh, we thrive on our donations, and we would love to have your support. Anybody that would like to become a member of Salem Arts, our memberships are open, and Salem Arts is also now a member of the North American Museums Program. So as a member of Salem Arts, uh, at some of our membership levels, you'll receive reciprocal membership, which allows you free entrance into over a thousand museums across North America, including discounts in their shops too. So come in and join us, ask us questions, uh, check us out, email us, anything you wanna know, we're happy to reply.